On today's episode, I'm revealing a new pedal. It's a limited thing and it has a crazy story. It's like a lost child of JHS that just needs Josh, to be released into hey, bud, Yeah, how's yeah. It going? Good. You're um, super close to we're me. We're building these right now. Okay. So I okay. just came to check in and make sure you're filming like a really good yeah, episode. I'm in the middle of it now. See, that's a camera. Okay, it just that you I'm need to just to. like give it your all. Like, oh, okay. We need to sell every single one of these, okay? Cuz I don't ever give it my all. I mean, okay. I I'll believe it when I see it. Okay. I just want to make sure cool. you do your job. I'll do mine. You're super close. All right. You go, champ. You got this. All right. That was awkward. In 2018, we all lived in a completely different world. Donald Trump was president. There was that nine-hour Marvel movie about the Avengers ending the world or something. And then Drake, he dropped a really hot track called God's Plan. I'd initially scaled up and we were gonna do an initial release of a thousand units. And uh, uh, yeah, wait. What, what's that? You said there, there is eight, 817, so what? But what happened to the 183? Hey, why don't you focus on selling the 817 circuits that we do have? And yeah. forget about yeah. that. That's what I'm trying. Just move on. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to focus on that uh, to answer your question nicely, Nick. We don't know. We think we threw them away. Oh. This was literally like four years ago. Anyway, so the world shut down and we actually moved our company into our homes for a good period of time. And we had to make a pivot and we had been working on the project Legends of Fuzz that many of you know about, and we felt like it was more exciting, it was a better build to build in our homes, and it just worked out better. So we shelved this, quite literally. We did the Legends of Fuzz series, it was really successful, it was really fun. Then we dropped three series a little bit later, and things just kept going. You know, you have a pack rat, you have this other pedal come out, and this has just sat there. And, uh, it's time for its wings to spread and fly like a Josh, phoenix. Hey, are you gonna talk about like how the circuit works? People need to actually understand like what yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, I'm. Use it. That's literally what I'm doing, Bell. Are you All not right. supposed to be like build like working down? I just, I they're collecting dust on the shelves. I need to make room for more crayons. Yeah, you've said that. I'm doing the video, so okay, I'll believe I'll, it when I see it. Josh. Let's walk through how the circuit works. Looking at this pedal and how it functions, it really only has two controls. It has a big giant red knob that is the volume or gain of the boost. So you've all seen that. If you turn it up, the pedal gets louder. And then on the side, you have a tiny little switch. When the switch is out, you are in op amp mode. So this switch goes between that mode and when it's in FET mode. Now, this is not a modification to a circuit. It's not taking a circuit and changing a couple parts. It works just like the Bonsai, Muffaletta, or the Pack Rat in the fact that when you hit the switch, you actually get an entirely different circuit. So this pedal, as small as it is, has two complete different styles of boost circuit. So when it's out, it is op amp. And op amp is the most classic form of boost. We see it kind of show up in the 70s because initially in the late 60s, you have the LPB1, which is a single transistor, pretty crude circuit. It works well, but then you really see boost perfected with something like the micro amp where they take an operational amplifier and they just set it to very clean gain. And as you turn this up, it simply takes your guitar, makes it louder, louder and louder without adding any distortion but because it's so loud and clean you can use that to hit an amp and distort the amp so it's very useful nowadays the craze is to take something like a claw and have the gain control down and use the volume up that is literally an op amp boost so you could think of that op amp setting as a micro amp or like a claw style boost and that would be really really accurate now when you push the switch in you have my favorite type of boost which is a FET boost that's a type of transistor it's a field effect transistor and the most famous FET boost in my opinion is the katana so when you do that you're getting two separate FETs in series and a really nice circuit it adds some sparkle some clarity and honestly it's a little dirty which is nice as you turn it up the FETs actually distort some of that adds to the harmonic content of the amp you also see it in things like the arrows, 
uh, the old Folds on Fat Boost as well. So it's classic and you have both of them in the setting. So as I said years ago and coined the phrase, loud is more good. We're gonna demonstrate that in four different jams. The first one, I'm gonna be using the FET mode and I'm gonna off camera have some different amps to kind of show this, but I'm gonna just start with the Sobtec MIG-50 that I've played for years and years. I'm gonna have it set really clean. I'm gonna have it in the FET mode. I'm gonna turn this up and you're gonna hear overdrive and that overdrive is not an overdrive pedal. It is the FET circuit within this. As you can tell, just using a clean amp, that's a fantastic lead tone without even using an overdrive pedal hey Josh, at all. Do you really, yeah. do you think yeah. that that jam really got the point across of the, like everything that this, like, I don't, you should, you should probably try to stack it with a Super Bowl. That was literally I setting think, here because that's what I'm doing. Okay. Well, just, I think that would be better for the next one. Yeah. Just well, no, going. it didn't. You got it. Yep. It, it, You're gonna do great. It's gonna be great. We're gonna sell all of these pedals. As I said earlier, I'm doing four jams and that was one of the four. So no, I did not get the point across bell. Again, shouldn't you be building the pedals or something? I, if I, you sell the pedals, I make the pedals. I'm just asking that you make my job matter. Yeah, okay. By doing your wow. job. All right. Oh, so for this next jam, we're gonna demonstrate uh, how you can have an overdrive pedal like the Super Bolt in a really low gain setting and then slam this into it using the op amp mode. So you could think of that as putting a micro amp or a clon in boost setting before another overdrive. Let's do that while Bell hovers over me. That was pretty good. I think you could probably do it again and talk a little bit faster because people are gonna get bored. Uh, everyone's attention spans are shrinking rapidly nowadays. <laughs> As I've said for years and years, a lot of people search for overdrives and they don't have luck with that. A lot of times it's just simply adding a boost to the front of a drive that you already like and a low gain setting or the amp that you have. So try that. Okay, I, really... I, re I like that you said that. I didn't know we were improvising, but that was a really, that was a really good point to make. I think you should say that when we're going for real. On this next jam, I'm gonna take the solo boost, I'm gonna put it in the FET mode so it has some grit to it and some brightness, and I'm gonna use it in one of my favorite applications for a boost pedal. I'm gonna put it before a fuzz pedal. So this is the JHS Cheese Ball. I'm gonna set it up kind of somewhere around the Tone Bender fuzz face land, so if you have any fuzz pedal, this works. I'm gonna set it so it doesn't gate, but I want this to cause this fuzz pedal to fuzz more and to start kind of choking and gating a little bit. And this is a really nice application. If you have fuzz pedals that don't do a gate sound, you can just slam a boost into it and specifically a FET boost. It works really nicely. And then I'm gonna add some delay, some really long ambient delay, cause I need to play some shoegaze. I'm really tired of playing classic rock and I'm excited about this. So let's let's do the jam. Okay, okay. I. I like the energy. I, I see where you're going. Um, you know what? I actually, I just have, I have one, I've got one more little idea. Okay. Um, so what I, I think, I just, yep. Okay. Well, okay you did, but you I did do. great, buddy. Okay. Um, so what I think needs to happen is I think you just need to like evoke emotion and passion and dreams into the audience. And so I think I want you to look 
right into the camera and I want you to say, can you guys, um, I want you to shoegaze your way into the future with the solo boost. Can you say that, Josh? I, I, it's not something I would say. No, I think, I think it's gonna be great. Okay. Go for it. Uh, I want you to shoegaze your way into the future on the next jam. And you think that people are gonna believe that you meant that? You know, it's all the eye of the beholder, I guess. All right, all right. So, but you gaze your way into the future with this next jam. Okay, cool. Let's just move on. On this next jam, hey, I'm Josh, going. You know what I think you should say? What I think will really what? get your point across. What's that, Bell? Um, I think that you should talk about. You know what? You know. How about you do it? I'm gonna go build some pedals. Okay. Yeah, I sure. really want out of here. Sure. Um, just don't break anything, please. All right. So on this next jam, Josh is going to play a small amp that is already distorted, and he's going to distort it into the future with the solo boost. I think that was awesome. That's great. We should roll with that. I think that was much better. up here I do want to go on a tiny little bit of a rant because there's only 817 ish of these we're just gonna sell them direct so that we get a decent margin on them and that's it we're just letting it be what it is I'm not a massive fan of limited things I've done some collectible stuff like the 66 series but you know something like this I would rather just put it out and have it be a product but we just don't have the parts. These are sitting around and I need to do that. Now I'm fully aware that this is collectible and really fun. And unfortunately, I'm fully aware of how people buy things and try to scalp it on reverb. So I do wanna say, please don't be that person. This is a boost, it's $99. Please do not buy this and put it on reverb for $300. And those of you out there, if you see this on reverb, for $250, $200, $300, just buy a different boost. There's all kinds of really good boosts. I'm proud of this circuit. Maybe years down the road, we'll order the parts and do more batches, but we have too much going on to make it an actual long-term product. So my rant there is, don't be that person. Don't scalp the pedal. Just don't do it. Please, I beg you. That's it, let's go to record time. Is that, is that like actually how you're ending yeah. the episode? Yeah, don't buy the pedal That's if someone's scalping. You... Okay. Um, so I thought this might happen, so I went ahead and filmed something um, just on my phone while you guys were doing your jam. So we'll, we're gonna cut to that now. You filmed something. Yeah, and I think it's gonna be a much better ending to this disaster. Cool. I mean, at this point, I, I, Nick, just whatever, player film or whatever she did. Whatever. I don't know what's happened yep. to um, this show. Let's, let's go. 
We're gonna cool. play it now. Play her thing and then I'll Thanks, do record Nick. time. I'll just do record time after her little her little craft project. Yeah. Yeah. The solo boost has changed lives at JHS. With every solo boost that is not sold, a JHS employee loses their sense of purpose. It has guided us through thick and through thin, through the good times and the hard times. It has challenged us and it has changed us. Once a part of our lives, now a part of yours. Bring home your solo boost today at jhspedals.com. Today's record time is brought to you by 2020's Western Swing and Waltzes and Other Punchy Songs by Coulter Wall. I'm choosing this record today because some of you need to diversify what you listen to. You only listen to like electric rock guitar. I'm just shaking it up a little bit. This is country western, uh, but it's modern. It's not country, so it's not like the new country that's basically 70s rock. This is like actual country. And uh, my favorite track on it is Big Iron, which is a Marty Robbins cover off of Gunfighter Ballads, which is one of my favorite records ever. And if you've watched the show, you understand why I love that record. But yeah, you should listen to it and you should make yourself enjoy it. Like give it three listens. And then if you still don't like it, you can tell me in the comments, but you should listen to it a fourth time at that point. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you get a chance to purchase this fun little piece of history. I don't know. I'm excited about it, but I know it's going to sell and I know some of you are going to buy it and some of you aren't going to buy it and there's going to be like wars and stuff over that, but I really can't help it. I just have to release it into the wild. So if you like this episode, hit like, subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon to get notifications of future episodes. Also, in the description below, you can jam along with all these jams over at BandLab. Really, that's it. So, bye. Cut. All right. That was all right. That was pretty I, good, guys. That was, that, was, that was pretty good. I literally said, like, the thing I always say to end it. There was, the, uh, the cut was yeah, unnecessary. Yeah, but I'm just letting everybody know that was good and we're done. Cool. Everybody go get lunch. You did a good job today. Oh, I hate my job. Thanks, Josh. Whatever. All right. Pretty cool.